welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a first impression demo and review on the NYX 2020 Holiday Collection Diamonds and Ice Please. I have both of the mini eyeshadow palettes, six pan palettes that they came out with. And then I did also pick up the face and body illuminator, one of those shades. So we are going to do one palette on one eye, one on the other, and then we'll try the highlight on the face and body as well. So if you're interested in seeing my first impressions, seeing me test, swatch, and create a look with these products and see if they're worth the money or not, then just keep on watching. So I did keep them in the super cute holiday package just to show you guys. So in this collection there are a few other items that I didn't pick up. Um, there seems to be one more of these little six pan palettes available like a blue super blue cool tone one. I couldn't find that in Canada at all so didn't pick it up. There is also a much bigger like 24 pan palette I would assume. I didn't like the looks of that and I thought these were cuter and then we could do two different looks. They also came out with a bunch of jelly eyeshadows. That is not a formula that I'm interested in trying or I just know I won't use so there's no point. Um, they came out with a bunch of lip products, glosses, but none of them were in shades that interested me. And then they also came out with the face and body highlights of which they released three I believe but the other two are way too deep for my skin. So I went with the shade Frosted Pearl, which is essentially exactly that. It's a really light, cool tone, pearly pink highlight, which I thought would be pretty as a eyeshadow topper as well, potentially. And it is definitely worth noting that within these eyeshadow palettes, three of the eyeshadows in here are going to be your classic powder eyeshadow formula. And then three of the shadows are pressed pigments, um, which say that they cannot be used on or around the eye area. They are not technically eye safe. There's a little diagram on the back of which are pressed pigments and which aren't, but I honestly think that they messed it up because on the back of the palette, it says that it's this one, this one, and the pink. Um, but I would assume it's the shimmers. I could be wrong. Um, and then in the palette here, same thing. We have three that are pressed pigments and three that are eyeshadows. It says that these ones, yeah, it says that these ones are the pressed pigments. So I feel like it's not correct on the back. I could be wrong, but I would assume that the pressed pigments are the shimmers. Technically, half of the eyeshadow palette isn't eye safe, um, but that's true for a lot of formulations nowadays. It just involves like staining and the ingredients that they use. A ton of like higher end ColourPop especially has a ton of eyeshadows in their palettes that aren't technically eye safe, so they have to call them a pressed pigment instead. So not mad at that. I think it just means that NYX is stepping up their formulation, if anything, trying to get on par with the rest of what's available on the market. So let's get into swatches. I haven't swatched anything because I want this to be a total first impression. I just picked these up this morning. First up, we have the Diamond Delirious palette, the more cool toned palette. Three mattes and three shimmer shades there. That there is how the Diamond Delirious palette swatches. You guys probably can't even see the first shade, but I'm honestly pretty impressed with those swatches. And then we have the Jeweled and Jaded palette. Super, super excited to swatch this one. Definitely more impressed with this palette, especially that first swatch and the last swatch are insane. The mattes are insane. It was super, super creamy and easy to swatch. And then lastly, we have the highlighter in Frosted Pearl. This is probably hard to tell because I am so fair, but it swatches really, really nicely. It's definitely a super fine glitter. I have to say that I am really impressed and honestly slightly shocked by those swatches, especially this Jeweled and Jaded palette. Looks like it's gonna be a winner. Typically, I would say I expect, and I would say the general public, expects or anticipates holiday launches from any brand to be of a lesser quality than the typical products from a collection, especially eyeshadows. But these, to me, swatching feel better than NYX's regular eyeshadows. That's a really good sign. I'm really excited to create a look with these. So we are going to start off by the least intimidating one, um, and that is the more cool-toned Diamond Delirious 
palette here. I am going to go in with a tiny bit of my ABHI primer to give these a good base. And I have gone ahead and zoomed you guys in a little bit, evidently, so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier, really see how all of the shadows are performing. I am going to start off the look right away, just going into that more neutral brown right into the crease, working it in. That pigment looks pretty intense. I like this brown shade. It's like a smoky hot chocolate kind of color. All right, I'm not having any issues with that shade so far. I think the pigment is nice. I think it's blending really nicely, especially considering how dry my eyelids are. All right, I'm going to go in with this shade here at the bottom, like a neutral sparkly brown and pack that pretty much all over the lid. Probably should have done a cut crease with this to make it pop more, but that's okay. We're just playing around. Then I'm gonna pack on some of this super unique like holographic shift shade almost. It has like green, taupe, cool tones in it. So we're going to mix that in onto the lid. So I definitely should have gone in with that holographic greeny taupey shade first because it has more opacity to it. The other one is more of a sheer sparkly topper. So I'm just gonna pack on this one a little more and then we will go back in with the bronze shimmer topper to just add a bunch of glitter on top. Going back in to the golden bronze shimmer topper shade and just packing that onto the lid on top of the holographic shifty shade. Yeah, you can't really see it over top of that. Okay, forget that step. Now I'm going to go back into the deeper cocoa brown with a like dense pencil brush and I'm going to work that into the outer V a little bit. Now I'm going to go into the lower lash line and work this pink shade all along the bottom lash line. And then I think I'm going to work in the brown in the outer corner to like connect everything. These shades are so, so crazy pigmented. I'm actually really impressed. Just added a little bit of the brown to the same brush that I did the pink with and I'm going to connect it in the outer corner. And then I'm going to go into this lighter champagne sparkle here and put it on the very inner corner, really, really trying to pack it on and get a lot of shimmer there. And then on a little flat shader, I'm going to go back into this more duochrome taupe shift and see if I can sharpen up any of the lines. I just popped off camera quickly to apply some mascara. I didn't want to do falsies because I want you guys to really be able to see the eye look. So I just added my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara, one of my favorites. And this is the completed eye look using the Diamond Delirious palette. I was really impressed with the shadow quality, the color payoff. I think it's really, really nice. I'm pleasantly surprised. I will say my inner corner of my eye is burning and the shade that I used there is this one which is one of the pressed pigment shades that technically isn't safe for the eye area, but it's an eyeshadow palette. I have very sensitive skin, very sensitive eyes. I wonder if it would burn if it was on my lid. Um, so yeah, if you have sensitive skin, maybe pass on these. I don't know. None of the other shades bothered me and I did use like the other shimmers all over the lid and they didn't bother me. It's just this one that seems to be burning my eye. So I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to leave it on obviously because I want to see the complete look, but yeah, that is the finished eye look on the left using the Diamond Delirious. Pleasantly surprised by this, especially because this is the one that I was least excited for out of the two. The other one just screamed more to me. I was more excited for it. With that said, it is now time to go in with the Jeweled and Jaded palette. I'm so freaking excited to use this. I just think these two colors especially are stunning. Um, and that matte like camel brown, I freaking love. I probably won't use the like black shade. I don't think it's fully black. It's more of a charcoal dark navy. I probably won't use that to be honest. It's just not calling to me. I think I'm gonna use these three and then do this on the lower lash line. Not 100% sure. I'm scared to use some of these near the eye now though, but whatever. We're trying it. So I'm going to start off by going in with a big fluffy brush and this super pretty camel shade. 
you can see there I literally tapped twice these are really really pigmented and they're not super super loose and powdery I would say they are less powdery and loose and have less kick up than the Anastasia shadows but they aren't super hard pressed either they're kind of in between I'm also very aware that I'm not super talented at eyeshadow I pride myself on my base and making my base look flawless those are my favorite products to play with but I feel like for an eyeshadow review that's kind of a good thing because I'm really just your average consumer when it comes to shadows I don't have a ton of experience so if it works for me and I can get a good look it should work for the average person I would say this shade is beautiful so far it's honestly working like any eyeshadow I have and love in my collection so mix kind of snapped now I'm going to go in with a super flat brush from Morphe and I'm going to go into that insane gold and try and get it really precise on the lid without doing a cut crease. The shade is applying absolutely beautifully. I imagine if you used a actual cut crease method, this would be insane. I will go over it a little bit with my finger on the center as well, but I just want it to be a little bit more precise. And I'm not spraying this with any type of setting spray. I'm just using it wet, or not wet, I'm using it dry as is. I am gonna try spraying my brush with this shade just to see how foiled and intense we can get it. Cause if it looks like that dry, that's pretty crazy for a drugstore shadow in my opinion. Um, so I'm gonna go in with the Smashbox Photo Finish Weightless Setting Spray and spray my brush. Oh wow, yeah, it really just builds up the opacity, I would say. It's a little more sheer without a setting spray. This makes it a little more opaque and foiled of a formula. So for the inner corner of this eye, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that gold shade with the lighter cream champagne, and I'm going to really concentrate that in the inner corner. Hopefully this doesn't burn this eye as well. Ooh, adding that like champagne shade in really makes a difference, that's really pretty. And then lastly, I'm going to take a e.l.f. fat pencil brush, and we are going to put this bright green shade on the lower lash line. So this isn't as like, pigmented and opaque. It might just be the brush is too dense. I am going to try spraying a little bit more of the Smashbox spray on this brush. See if we can get a little more opacity on the lower lash line, a little more pop. Oh yeah, that helps a lot. Now we are going to go back in with Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir and add some mascara to this eye as well, bottom and top lashes. Okay, so for the highlight, I'm using my Morphe R36 brush. This is my all-time favorite brush for highlight. So we're going to go into the Diamonds and Ice Please Face and Body Illuminator in Frosted Pearl. I don't have any highlight on right now, by the way. I did bronzer and blush and didn't do highlight. It is definitely more of a loose, like not loose glitter because it is pressed, but it appears like a loose glitter on the face almost. It's very glittery, very sparkly. It looks a lot better with the cool toned side of the look. I think this would be more of like a highlight topper. You could add a little bit more glitter on top. Um, that's how I would use it or as an eye topper. I don't feel like any of my looks need this, so I'm not gonna try doing that. And I don't use body highlighter at all. That's just like not my thing. So I will not be using it or trying it or that because that's just not how I would use it. I don't know, I'm not mad at it. Like it does look really pretty here with the more cool tone look. It would be really pretty for Halloween if you're doing like anything ethereal, like a fairy, an angel, anything that you want like cool tone glow and sparkle. It's gonna be really pretty for that. I can definitely say that these stand out for me are the two six pan eyeshadow palettes. My expectations weren't super high for these. Honestly, as I said in the beginning, limited edition and holiday collections, usually the quality isn't as high as the regular quality, but I think these are better quality than some of NYX's recent palettes that I've tried. Makes me want to pick up the like 24 pan one. I'll have to go back and take a look at it, but the color story just wasn't doing anything for me. But I'm honestly happy that I picked these up. I can't remember exactly how much they are, so I will link down below links to like Ulta, the NYX site itself, and then maybe shoppers so you can compare prices depending on where you live. In conclusion, I honestly think that these little six pan guys are worth it. 
And then the highlight is up to you how you would like to use it or if you feel like you have a need for it in your collection. With that said, that is everything that I have for you guys today. If you did like this video and you learned something or it was helpful for you or you just enjoyed watching, then definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up, a like, so that I know if you guys like to see these kinds of videos. As well, please do be sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I would really appreciate it. And as always, I hope that you have or had an absolutely awesome day and thank you so so much for watching. Bye!